As I move my arm around, the cursor moves. If I want to open an icon, I need to pinch. If I want to scroll, I need to pinch, hold, and move my arm up. Look how easy that is. And if I want to get back to the home screen, I'll just twist my hand like this. Something happened last week that shook the tech world to its core and created a mix of emotions for the public watching from afar. On one hand, our imaginations were totally on fire as Mark Zuckerberg from Meta presented the compact augmented reality glasses called Orion with a really cool neural wristband for control features. On the other hand, it was disappointing because he announced that Meta would only be sharing this tech with its own employees and a small select group outside of the company as they go through more development to make it more fashionable and affordable. I actually knew that Meta was going to make that announcement before it even happened because I've been working with other companies that are developing similar technology with the neural wristband and heard rumors that this would be the next step. In fact, there is a fascinating whole backstory to this where two different wrist neural interface companies took two different paths. One called Control Labs sold to Meta, which eventually resulted in the Orion neural wristband. And the other company called Mudra that was basically started at the same time and has created a very similar experience has remained independent and have integrated their neural wristband wearable into use with your Apple Watch or your laptop. And unlike the Orion wristband, you could actually purchase a Mudra to start working with right now. In this video, I'll be interviewing the founder of Mudra, Guy Wagner, who will tell us some of the facts fascinating backstory behind wrist wearable neural interfaces that at this point involves billions of dollars. We'll see how Mudra compares to the Meta Orion wearable. We'll show you how you can get a head start on the use and development of this fascinating technology. So Guy, thanks for coming to Las Vegas. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we uh, connected on a uh, Zoom call a couple of weeks ago and uh, you guys were nice enough to send me the Mudra band. I've had a lot of fun playing with it. Wow, I'm so happy that you liked it. Yeah. We've got uh, this video looping in the background. You guys have some some awesome information here. So so tell us about this really quick. What is this? Well, what you see here is the Mudra Band for Apple Watch. So it's a, it's a neural interface. It, it, moni it monitors electrical activity in the wrist and translates it into functions of, on a digital device. And, and here specifically, it is for the Apple ecosystem. So... Uh, on my watch, for example, I can select which device to connect to. It can be an Apple TV, it can be uh, my iPhone, my Mac, uh, or any other device in the ecosystem. So what you're telling me is if I move my hand, it's actually going to translate that into movements on the screen and actions on the screen as yeah, well. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And I had a lot of fun playing around with it. I was surprised how small of things I could pinch. Uh, I had like a YouTube video pulled up at one point. I was moving the, the volume sliding bar with it. And I was like, this thing's really accurate, actually. Mm -hmm. Amazing. And we can see a little bit of the device here. We, we both have our mudras on, but it's hard to see the sensors because they're actually against our skin. You know, if you look at this screen, uh, can you tell us a little bit about what these sensors are and how the, what signals they're picking up and how that's translated into interacting uh, with a graphical user interface? Okay, so as, as we said earlier, when I intend to move my fingers, my brain sends commands over my nervous system. So these commands innervate my muscles, and, and, general, and basically we pick up these tiny signals. Mm -hmm. But usually electromyography devices are sitting on the belly of the muscle, where you have a lot of signals, a lot of activity. But this is not a location that is socially acceptable because people don't wear stuff here on on the forearm, yeah. they wear it on the wrist. So uh, our so th there is this um, method of surface nerve conductance tests where you inject signals from one point of the limb to an, and measure like the um, quality or, or health of your nerves. So that's how we termed our technology because we are close to the ulnar median radial nerves in the wrist. And, and that's electroneurography as opposed to electromyography, right? Well, I think th these are terms that are more uh, um, commercial terms. Uh -huh. In the end, it is electromyography, but on certain different locations and uh, different uh, voltage ranges because it is a noisier and 
Uh, right. So it's like, are you picking up the, the signal from the muscles or the signal from the nerves? So in the end, okay. I, I imagine at a certain point, it doesn't even matter because you're using the machine learning to, to differentiate between whatever is going on underneath the sensors anyways, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And in the end, it's the same uh, motor unit potentials that you want to read. Gotcha. Well, it's really uh, exciting technology. I'd love to jump into a demo, but first I'd like to ask you, uh, because I think that in the mainstream, people have been tracking this other company called Control Labs that Facebook bought a couple of years ago, and it sounds similar. Do you know like, who Control Labs is or how that relates to what you guys are doing? Well, actually, in, I think, 2014, there was another company uh, called Talmic Labs. They had the Mayo armband. Mm -hmm. uh, well, that was the first uh, uh, my electromyography device for, uh, uh, like, for everyone. Um, they somehow disappeared, uh, and then Control, Lab, Control Labs bought the patents, and they did their own work as well. Uh, and then uh, they were bought by... Uh, than Facebook. And the reason why I bring it up is that big tech is looking at this too. I mean, this is technology that's being looked at very seriously. You were just in Seattle for Augmented Reality, Extended Reality Conference. Uh, big tech is looking at this as sort of the next interface for being able to interact with computers. So this is extremely relevant, and which is why I was really excited when I saw this technology and started being able to work with uh, you and your company because uh, things are happening and they're happening quickly. In this space so would you mind showing us uh i know you have a demo on uh your laptop here for the mooder i'd love to see more okay so what you currently see is like a animation of the of the nerve innervation and what you can see now is actually my signals that the mooder picks up there are three sensors so you see three colors and each finger that I will move will have a, a different setup of, of signals working together. Uh, sometimes you can even differentiate them by eyes. So, but what's nice about it, now I'm moving my fingers, I intend to move, but if, for example, if you, for example, remove my, my fingers or I will do it with my other f uh, hand, uh, nothing will happen because I didn't intend the movement. And that's just a different signal. It's not mechanical. That's the, the thing. The thing that it's not a mechanical I movement. It's yeah. the intention. So if you move your finger, the actual movement of your bones won't set it off. It has to be nerve conduction that actually is set up, exactly. picked up by the sensors. Exactly. Why is that important uh, to differentiate between the two? Okay. So the thing is that uh, I want to detect your intention. I'm, I don't really care about the movement itself. Uh, I want to be able to detect your intention even without moving. Uh, someday in the future, uh, I would like to be able to, de to detect even a single, uh, single motor units firing. It's something that we work on, but it's not something that you can currently use because it's very, very um, personal. Everyone is, is different. Uh, and when you do that, you will be able for just uh, you, has, you have so many motor units in the hand. So f you, that each of them uh, is activating a, a different n uh, muscle fibers. So if you could willingly control each of them separately, you could have a lot of new functionality. For example, the other day I thought, what if I could, you know, the mouse itself have like, has like, I think, five parameters that you have to control, like the, the, uh, where the tongue is, uh, the height of the tongue, or where, and what's the shape of the mouse. So if I could teach myself to do the same, to control the same functionalities with some of my uh, motor units, I could, for example, speak for my hand. Or, or, or if you want to control a robotic arm or, or another thing. So, so it's not about the movement, it, it's about the intention. Similar to what Nolan Arbaugh has talked about with the Neuralink brain implant, he just intends to move the cursor and it already moves. And I think that what you, and I don't mean to steal your thunder, but okay. uh, what you and I and the team have talked about uh, before on our calls is that you actually don't even need to move your finger. You can intend to move your finger and just have these little micro movements, these little micro nerve conductions that happen underneath the sensors and be able to control the, 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 the cursor that way. Mm-hmm. Did exactly. you, I think you actually might even have a demo of that today. Yeah, I, I have a demo of All that. All right. I totally stole your thunder, but... So, no, it's okay. <laughs> so, 
in, in this view, you can see that I can apply some pressure between my fingers, small or higher or stronger, and I can really control like the uh, gradation of the pressure. Uh, and this can be really handy in augmented reality and other uh, um, interactions where, when you really want to know how much pressure you apply, for, for example, for uh, um, some unreal object, some uh, imaginary mm -hmm. object. Like if you're uh, squeezing something, you needed to apply certain pressure to not have it slip out of your hand or something uh, like that. Exactly. Uh, so, and later on, we can go into it. But because I know the amount of force you apply, I can... And I can infer out of it the weight of stuff that you hold. So if I'm holding an object, I can really detect how, mu how much it weighs. Mm. Oh, wow. That, my, my brain just fired in multiple different <laughs> directions about what to do with that. Okay. Okay. Um, so now we can uh, start what we call air touch. Air touch is the ability to move, to use the mudra as an air mouse. So, actually, it's okay. So now uh, let's go through just some simple demos. So here I have Morty, and I can just pinch wow. it and move around. And when I'm twisting like that, that's specifically for Apple. I can uh, go to this multi-screen view, and here, for example, uh, it's just mimicking by movement. I can play this cello. <laughs> it's so fun. <laughs> yes. It's fun watching you too because I tried this at home and uh, I quickly realized that it's actually a specific skill set. Like I wasn't very good at it. I was missing things, you know, and I had to redo it. And just watching your um, state of flow there and how uh, seamlessly you're able to do that. I'm, I'm just appreciative of your skill set here and actually using it. Yeah, actually, well, one of the funny things at the convention, uh, guys that are from other companies, uh, that I won't say, won't say the name, that are used to use such uh, technologies were very, very, really easily controlled it. Mm. So um, another thing that we can do, and that's again specifically for Mac, if I'll move my hand like that, now I can just scroll my screen up and down just by dragging. So this is specific functionality for, for the Mac uh, environment, for the Apple environment. I think these are nice demos that we usually uh, show in conventions. Yeah. But what I would like to show you now is what we call a neural play. Anyway, you told about you said about the skill set. Yeah. So one of the things, uh, maybe we can, with this specific game that it took me a while to this con the. Uh, here it's it's not the regular signals that we we are using here. I'm, here I'm trying like mathematically to to find the linear factorization of the signal to like signals that are um, orthogonal. And and then you in order to control this specific signal, I, I had to whenever I was a, a, like if, when I, whenever I was too immersed in the game and started to be nervous, I couldn't control it anymore oh. properly. Because maybe your fight or flight was messing up yeah, the micro signals. Yeah, exactly. And then, and so it really, it really, in the beginning, it was like meditating to get to a relaxed oh, point. Oh, wow. Where I'm, where I'm being able to control the signals, relax. So we'll talk about that in a little bit because there are some meditation uh, aspects to this. And it's just amazing that your sympathetic versus parasympathetic nervous system will actually affect peripheral nerves, right? Mm -hmm. How nervous you are actually will affect yeah. these micro signatures in your arm, which has applicability to meditation, which um, there, there's some things there to explore as well. But we want to make sure to show this micro movement uh, so are we tutorial. set? So we're set. Go ahead and show us some micro movements. So here we see uh, the temple run game. And so are you uh, imagining moving a specific finger or? Actually, uh, yes, I'm, I'm thinking of the movement, but I'm trying to do it as, as small as possible because I really want it to be a, a micro movement. So what, what movement are you uh, so what, uh, visualizing? You can see, you can see the blue... Uh, the blue bar, it's connected to trying to move my thumb. Okay. And, and... So thumb is jump. So the thumb is movies? jump. And uh, pinky is this... Uh, 
Um, turn? No, turn is, is the ring finger. What does Pinky do? And Pinky will slide oh. like that. <laughs> well, I'm going to be better at uh, Halo here pretty soon than all the rest of the people that I've been competing with online because they have to use that clunky Xbox controller and I'm just going to be thinking about moving my thumb. <laughs> my character's going to fly right at him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, and and it's just one of those things too that people are just going to have to experience because seeing it is one thing but actually you know seeing those bars jump up and down with the intended movement i'm sure is uh kind of eye-opening yeah it's a uh, for me it, it when i when i try to build this specific well the game itself is a web game is a, like an online game and i'm just control the bars themselves they control they connect to the mac the band is connected to the Mac as an HID device, like a keyboard and a mouse. Uh, and that's why you can connect it to to any uh, device that is connected by Bluetooth. Now, each uh, each bar is sending a key. So, uh, it, uh, down key, left key, right key. Um, and when I was building that, I was telling you that uh, the game itself is very immersive and you start to... Uh, to feel like to be anxious during it and when i do especially now that it's like a special scenario and i'm a bit far from the screen so uh, you you don't control control the bars as well as as well as you would uh, and i need to relax myself it's really it's it's a kind of meditation because for me one of the the, the goals of meditation is to be able to act in the real world in in a stressing environment but with a cool head yes yes there's a biofeedback element to it mm -hmm. i never thought of it that way that there was this game that you're controlling but the actual control itself it's almost like if you had an xbox controller but the xbox controller was responding to how nervous you were which mm -hmm. there's no two way at this point of anything that exists like that yet that's true but as we integrate these wearable sensors into gameplay, that's what's going to happen. The game's actually going to be responding to how cool of a head that you have in the moment. And I think that's... Um, now people are playing for the fun, but I think that this can be really helpful. In, um, if you could like uh, play out uh, stress, uh, stressing scenarios uh, that are stressing for you, and you could, and you could get this... Uh, this, it, this feedback, but that's actually a more of a, our future, a, a, one of our future applications. So there you have it, Control Labs sold to Meta for upwards of a billion dollars. And although the product looks really cool, you and I unfortunately won't have the opportunity to try it as a wrist neural wearable for some time. But very few people at this point know about this other company called Mudro that basically has the same tech. And if you want the option of getting started with a neural wrist wearable interface, check it out. I do have a discount affiliate link below if you wanna try them out. And if you wanna see how I've been tracking my focus with a pair of brainwave sensing headphones, click this video here and I'll see you on the other side.